Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here with an unboxing. This one is from Ashley Nebel, who is a patron who offered to send me some isopods and how can I refuse? Some of these are isopods I've never actually seen in anything but pictures on the internet. So pretty excited for that. Very secure taping there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there's the whole permit there. All right. Excellent. All right. I have a list here. And there's some extras in there, which will be fun. I just didn't want to uh, reveal the secret until we do the unboxing here. So let's take a look. Oh, I can feel one right there. Okay, this first one, VP. This is why I got the macro lens out. Because these are very, very tiny isopods indeed. Mm, let's see what we can do to take a look. Closer look. I got my, my macro lens. Brought it with me here, so let's take a look. I'm going to kind of look around in there a little bit. With the macro lens through it a little bit. This species is fairly small and secretive, which makes it an excellent option for many types of bioactive setups. There's some really tiny ones right there. Let's get out the macro lens and look at those. There are a couple of them right there. These are Venicillo parvus Dalmatian. There are a couple of different varieties in the hobby. There's the just wild type, which is actually kind of variably patterned and colored. And then there's the Dalmatian, which has the predictable pied coloration. You can see really well on that individual there. And then there's a kumquat variety, and I think there's a couple others out there. But these stay pretty small, about a quarter of an inch, Approximately five millimeters, you know, something like that. But they are really good at doing their job, staying mostly under the substrate and uh, going about their bioactive duties. They do tend to conglobate rather readily and stay in a state of conglobation for quite a period of time. Oh, there's one waking up, a couple of them waking up. <laughs> Cute little creatures. A little like very, very minuscule magic potions. Now from what I understand, I might not see a whole lot of those for a while, but uh, when I go digging around in the substrate, I'll notice that I have a lot more of them than I started out with. And it looks like Ashley sent me a, a generous portion there. So, thank you. New species for me. I want to jump in here for a second before we go much further and give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. I myself support a few creators on Patreon because I think it is, really helps uh, make the community you know, more connected. It helps the creators to continue to create and improve. And so I appreciate that when my patrons do the same for me. There's a lot I do with your help that I couldn't otherwise do. So thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who support the channel in any way you can. Even just watching this video is another form of support. So I appreciate it all. If you would like to become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link in the description or at the end of this video. And now back to the unboxing. 
Let's look at the next one here. What's this one going to be? CZ. Take a peek. Oh, look at that. I dropped a little piece of... Dropped a little piece of sphagnum moss and it worried me for a second. But these are chocolate zebras. And I'm hesitant to get too far in there because I don't want them to fall. Look at that. There we go. Get a decent look at them. Right there. I occasionally get sort of a paler zebra in my colony, but these actually look distinctive from what I get. So that's cool. I like these more than the, the ones that I get that I, were think, I was thinking were chocolates. They may be something else. These have a nice contrast to them, which is what I like. And then here, bigger, oh, look at that, Armadillidium gestroy. This is one of my absolute favorite Armadillidium species. And I've, I've got them already, but I needed some more, some new blood, so to speak. I was happy to get some new blood. And, oh, these are some really nice individuals. Starting to get pretty big. These can get quite large. And just really nothing beats these colors among the Armadillidium. Um, I know that... Uh, the Armadillidium klugai Montenegro are pretty beautiful, but me being partially colorblind, I'm not as sensitive to the, the red, and the spotting is usually, you know, considerably less uh, visible and striking the, than it is on these. These just have absolutely fabulous striking pattern, even when they're young, like that one you can see there. So it looks like I've got a good mixture of sizes, some larger, but not fully mature size individuals and then some smaller ones so that's great and those are going to go straight into my my bin with uh i have two gestroy bins and they're going to go straight in there with them here we go so here's one of my bins oh i left the, the cork bark turned over as you can see most of them in here in mine are younger juveniles this particular bin so this will be a good addition and get not only some new bloodlines, but different sizes and ages in there. Oh, that moss is getting a little bit dry. It's damp on the bottom still, but it's time to water it for sure. And Ashley mentioned that this is some beet in there. Had to beet, didn't have so much carrot. So I just never get tired of the colors of these. They're just so intense. And for those of you who may not have heard it, it is thought that these are probably a mimic of a pill millipede native to their area. And I believe all the stock of Gestroy that is in the hobby is from France, which is pretty cool. Hmm. There's one ducking into the sphagnum. And the next ones are Armadillidium vulgare color mix, also known as gem mix. And as Ashley mentioned, she pulled some of these from from Potion, from Pennyback, from Punta Cana, T positive albino, T negative albino, orange vigor, and put them into a miscellaneous bin of Armadillidium vulgare. So. I like it. I think I'm going to put that in with my gem mix and add some variety there because the more variety, the better in a gem mix as far as I'm concerned. And it sounds like that will give me some 
good variety. So let's let's take a look at some of those there. That one looks like a Punta Cana sort of individual there. That one maybe too. Yeah, let's put some of those in there. There's a piece of beet. It's fun going through the, the gym, or going through the sphagnumos looking for isopods. In this case, gem makes her color mix, but it kind of reminds me of those games you'd do as a kid when they would let you put a big pile of wood shavings down and put coins in it. A little bit like that. <laughs> oh, I really like that. That high yellow individual there. I guess that's how I would describe that one. Some nice darker ones for contrast, which really help make a gem mix pop. Got to have enough of the darker ones in there so that it shows up. Another one there. I'm sure there are more in that moss that I just picked up. There's another. A couple of them there. Oh, good. Lots more in there. Good numbers. There's a very, very pale little one there with the darker, older ones. Well, thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Ashley's going to be starting soon with a little isopod shop, as I recall. Looks like she's off to a great start. Sending me some excellent isopods and uh, I'm excited to uh, get going with these. I need to set up a, a little bin for the uh, chocolate zebras now. And thanks for watching today. I post videos all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content on Fridays with live streams on Wednesdays. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell and choose notifications all so you don't miss my next video.